Hey guys, BJ the Brave here. Welcome to the Orcs faction tier list. So this is a video where we're going to break down every single card in the Orc faction. This is December 2023, so if cards get added after this, obviously we may do a, a rev revised version of the tier list. But I've been playing quite a lot of Orcs this season and last, and I feel comfortable with um, you know rating and reviewing where I think the cards are. Um, personally, when I started the game, this type of content was really helpful. It helped me understand like what cards to collect, what not to waste resources on, and what I should be really building my deck lists around. So I hope this really helps. Let's dive on in. Okay, so for this tier list, what we're going to do is we're going to keep it dead simple. S tier is an awesome card. Um, you absolutely want this card in your collection. You're going to be running it in multiple decks. A is a really good card. Yeah, really solid. Um, it might not be that kind of like top, top tier uh, card, but they're really good and fit into all manner of decks. B is situational. So that means that in very specific situations, the card can still be good. But in many situations, it's clunky or wasted or doesn't work if it's not in the right kind of synergy deck or the right timing in the game. So situational, kind of like it can be good, but it isn't always good. It, it can be bad as well, right? And C just sucks. Um, you know, there's no other way of putting it. The card doesn't work very well. It's not worth your time and it's not worth you investing in. So let's dive right in and see what we have got. Okay, so first and foremost, we have got Boss Zagstruck. Now, for me, Boss Zagstruck is quite a situational card. Um, he is going to have a fantastic deck at some point, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but right now, he's just a bit overshadowed by the others. He really... He's... he's, he's his actual talent itself is quite situational, right? Like, obviously, if you need to kill a flyer and that you can do that all of a sudden with your war boss getting a plus one, then that's brilliant. But that's not the case most turns, so it's very situational. Uh, next up, we got Gazgul. Gazgul is absolutely awesome. If you don't know, he's pretty much the meta right now. Uh, he received a new ability to his warlord talent that allows him to summon two grots. Now, these two grots are two health each. So if you think about it, Gaskell gets to put four health across two bodies every single turn. No one else can keep up with that. It's insane. It's awesome. Craft Gaskell ASAP. Uh, next up, we've got Gook Face Ripper. Uh, if it wasn't for Gaskell, <laughs> he'd probably be the best warlord in the game. Grook is superb. I've said it before. It's one of my favorites. I think his ability is unbelievably good. He can draw a card, but it's not just draw a card. It's drawing a troop. And that really is good from a deck design perspective because we know that we can thin our deck of troops, which means that we're more likely to then get uh, talents on our normal card draw. It's phenomenal. You can build around it really, really well, and it helps you to constantly have resources. The only thing with Grook is he's obviously a bit more flimsy than Gaskell. All right, so next up we have got the Attack Squig. Now, I think the Attack Squig is very, very situational. I I don't love it, but I don't think the card sucks. I, for example, uh, I lost a game where my opponent played the uh, Stormboy Strike, filled the board with loads of Stormboys, and then used the Attack Squig to basically stun my one decent unit that was on my side. And it won in the game. Um, there are a lot of ways where it can win you the game. I actually think it works better in, a, in an aggro deck than a control deck but there's many times where you know the, the ability for one of your cards isn't really worth it and that's why I, i'm not confident saying it's good now the grot on the other hand i actually do think that the grot is a good card i think the grot is do i think it's awesome do i think it's situational i think it's good i think it's good it's solid right it means you can always put three bodies down on the board and that has synergies with other cards. Uh, obviously, has synergy with things like Gasgull's ability to kind of then make them bigger if your opponent doesn't deal with them, and just basically gives you a basis for a go-wide strategy. Next, we have the Giant Bomb. I think the Giant Bomb is very situational. I'm always kind of happy to see it played against me. It, in theory, will fit in with that kind of Boss Zagstruck aggro deck that's going to get built one day. Um, right now, though, it's very rare that it's good. Um, obviously can give you reach 
and it does fit in an all-out aggro deck. But other than that, a lot of the top decks it's not in, and I don't think it's very good. Makari, on the other hand, goes straight to the top of awesome. I mean, Makari is insane. If we, we should have an S plus insane category, and that would be where Makari is. The fact that we can basically play Makari every single turn for one mana and buff our board is phenomenal. It's fun to play with. I'm not even talking about the broken combo that you can do with him when you play the Green Horde and the Orc Knob and just keep on bringing him on to be a board clear for only 5 mana. That's absolutely insane. Um, but even aside from that, even if they fix that tomorrow, this is still an S tier card. It's a superb legendary and it's. I hope it doesn't get nerfed. Beyond that combo, I hope Makari is always in the game because I think it's really, really powerful but really good. Um, Arda's Nails is another one that I think is a really good card. I wouldn't say it's like awesome and actually... I think that now that uh, we are seeing less of the Green Horde synergy and other synergies arise with the Rise of Gazgul, Arda's Nails is not as kind of necessary, but it's still very good. We've got cards like Grots, we've got Hordes, we've got things like the Gretchen mobs where Arda's Nails um, can synergize really, really nicely. The Bomb Squig. Now, I am not a fan of the Bomb Squig. Now, this might be kind of surprising to people, but I actually think it sucks. Now, it could be, you could say it's situational. The main situation where I think it's good is combined with the Orc Knob. Because with the Orc Knob, obviously, this thing gets flank. And in, and in that situation, it is good, right? To be able to flank, kill something off with the Bomb Squig, it's essentially another cheap AoE. But outside of that one combo, I really don't think this is very, very good at all. It's very, very slow. Your opponent can gets to react and play around it effectively. So for me, in practice, it's a lot worse than it looks on paper. And I'm going to say it's my first one that sucks. Uh, next up, we've got Cloud of Smoke. Now, Cloud of Smoke, for me, is actually a good card. I'm going to put it in situational only because it's not a good card as in, like, you can't just play it in every alt deck, right? It, it, it does need you to build a deck around the mechs to have a decent amount of mech synergy. When you've got the mech synergy, it's a good card. So it would be an A tier card in any mech build. But I think the overall, when we talk about the Orc faction, I say it's a situational card. There's many decks you'll build where you don't need it. So I, I would put it I would put it there. So next up, we have got the Orc Boy. I think this card sucks. Uh, I think that it's just... You can chuck it into a, a green horde deck because it's another two drop that will be discounted to zero. And beyond that, it's kind of pointless. Um, I'd rather Warlord talent on the first turn of the game. And outside of that, it loses. It has no. It has very little value outside of those two situations. So I think it's a poor card. And the Orc Encampment, I'm going to kind of say the same for. Uh, I just don't think that the ability does much in practice. It. Uh, this. I could change my mind on this. I think that with time and with practice that this this um, this might get a little bit better but right now it's, it's very underused and it's just not seeing good value now the profit of the war hmm, hmm profit of the war I think the profit of war is a very good card I mm, yeah I think it's very good I, I I wouldn't say it's awesome and the only reason I'm saying it's not awesome is that it costs you two energy and you don't do anything. So you lose tempo when you play this card. And that's the downside of the card. The other downside is that it only shows you three um, stratagems from your deck. And so it's not as predictable as you think. It's not like automatically pick the spell that you really need, right? Like that would be insane. Uh, and quite often I've played Prophet of the Wild digging for something specific and it's not come up in the options. So then you could say, well, it limits deck building because I've got to try and play a few units and so, sorry, fewer stratagems. So it suddenly gets a little bit less good. That said, the basic premise and principle is good. It's a Swiss Army knife approach. It's play a spell, thin your deck, get the spell, um, a spell that's useful in that current situation. So it is, it is a good card. Uh, now, the Scragham card it gives us flank to a friendly troop. <sighs> the problem with this is it always just feels like a, such an expensive gimmick, right? Like, for me, these cards mo mainly suck because, you know, like, say it's, I don't know, a five drop. Well, it's going to cost you seven to give it flank. Say it's an eight or a ten drop card, like a, what, some of these big, scary-looking units that you can get in the game. Yeah, great, but now it's a 
12 drop cards. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, 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 it just... And it's and it's cost you two cards to, to to play that one thing. So for me, it's a poor card. Now the Slugger Boy is really solid, as is the Storm Boy, and they both slot into uh, into here for me as uh, as as good cards. I think I think that they're, they're, they're kind of they're the kind of mainstay, especially before Gazgul came along. These are kind of like the mainstays. I think the Storm Boy is slightly better than the Slugger Boy because it's got Fly, and I think Fly is really good. But being able to deploy two of them, and obviously getting the discount with the Green Horde so that they don't cost you anything, and you can play them for free, is extremely powerful. So, uh, overall, I think those two are really good cards, and you're happy to see them. Uh, one card that is not, I can't say the same for, though, is the Truck Boy. I think the Truck Boy absolutely sucks. And even in a mech build, I don't know that I'd run the Truck Boy. It gives you Vanguard. And he's got 3 health. So you could say, well, the Warlord can't deal with it purely. So it's a slight speed bump, but... Vanguard just doesn't work for me like that. Um, the, on the only example I can think of is the Gretchen mod, but that's because you get 3 of them. Um, yeah, I think Truck Boy sucks. So it's a terrible card. Now, the Green Horde clearly is an awesome card. I think the Green Horde... Before uh, Gazgul, um, the Gazgul got his buff this season. The Green Horde was potentially the best card in the faction. All of the Orc decks were built around it. Now there's more flexibility. So it's lost a little bit of its kind of pizzazz, but it's still fantastic. It's game winning. It's super powerful. It allows you to flood the board. It allows you to play big Orc combos. I, I really think that uh, the Green Horde is, is an awesome, awesome card and definitely an epic card that you should be, if you're new to the Orcs, you should be looking to craft. This should be very high on your list as a card to craft and spend your epic wild cards on. Uh, similarly, I actually think the Gretchen mob is also awesome. Very flexible. You can use it early game. You can use it late game. Uh, and giving you those three speed bump um, Vanguard is quite unique. It's a bit different. In a lot of the other Vanguards in the game are like big, tough units with lots of health or armor. This is like, no, nah, the, they're just the grots, <laughs> but there's three of them. You've got to kill three of them before you can hit face again. Um, obviously, it's susceptible to AoE. Combines really nicely with Arda's Nails for a good turn five. Um, but it's an awesome card. It's in pretty much every Orc deck you'll come across. It's definitely a good one that you want to be playing. Uh, the Grot Tank is... Hmm, where do I think the Grot Tank falls? The Grot Tank was played a lot last season. It was really good in the last meta. It stood up well to the Marine and the Necron 3 drops in particular. I think it's lost a bit of impetus, a, a, a bit of its magic in this meta. And I dropped it for a large time, but I'd still, I still say it's a good card. It doesn't, j just to play this on three, on energy three, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's got good stats all round, and it's got the one armor as well. Um, but you know, unstable. It, I, I really hate unstable. It, 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 I, it doesn't make me sleep well at all. But I still think overall, you've got to say the Grot Tank is pretty good for three energy. Uh, it's not awesome, but it's 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 towards the bottom end, I'd say, of, of the good cards. Uh, the Horn Hell Boys, I think this card is bad. I really think it's bad. I think it is... It sucks. Yeah, it's. I was going to say, is, it's, is there a situation where it's good? Not not really, not for me. I think it's poor. Proper Kill It is fantastic. I think Proper Kill It is awesome. It gives the Orcs a really good finisher. Um, you can run two copies of these things. They have, they, they mean that your war boss can do eight damage in one turn. Actually, with Makari, that becomes ten damage. Uh, if you want to get really crazy and play like Makari and a banner knob, then you could potentially be doing twelve damage. So um, overall, Prop Killy fits in really nice with a faction um, theme. And it's very orky and it's very effective. It's a good finisher. I think proper killer you should be going ahead and crafting pretty early on, to be honest. So next up, we have got the Pyro. Pyro, where would I put Pyro? I think Pyro is definitely a good card. It's not awesome. It's, and in a way, it's kind of situational, obviously, because you're not just going to play something that gives you blast uh, gives everything blast two for nothing. You're going to want a board state where that's actually going to do something. So in that kind of definition, it is situational, but it is a good card. It only costs three energy, and at the end of the day, it allows you to clear stealth units. It allows you to get rid of go wide strategies like like grots, you know. So it's good in the Orc mirror match. 
and it also allows you to do damage to your enemy war boss when they put up a vanguard next to it because you can attack the vanguard and obviously the blast damage is still getting through to face so pyromanics is a very quite flexible card and for cheap relatively cheap it can be extremely powerful it can be can really change the board state great against scarabs and things like that. all those sort of go wide synergies of good at clearing spirit stones very very good card yeah i like pyromanics uh, next up we got the Shooter Boy. Oh, now then, where am I putting Shooter Boy? I think Shooter Boy is really good. Is he awesome or is he good? I think... I think he goes in good for me. He's right at the top of good, though. He's right at the top of good. Because um, he's only got one melee attack, so he can be played around. But generally what this is, is a very synergistic, very good, well-themed card. And it allows you to put a lot of pressure on your opponent and... Um, you know, get lots of sort of mob. It's one of the best uses of the mob mechanic. Just lots of ping, one damage. They can clear spirit stones. They can clear Necron remnants. They can hurt stealth units. They, they, you know, there's lots of ways you can kind of make you tactical use of those pings. I think Shooter Boy's really good. I also think Spanner is awesome since they did the buff. Now, Spanner is obviously in some way situational because he is a synergistic card. He's not a card that I, I he's a card that I very rarely just play on his own, right? You want to be playing him with something. You want him to be comboing either with Burner Boy or with one of the vehicles. But when you combo Spanner with the vehicle now, holy schmoly, I mean, <laughs> guys, I've got some pictures. Like, I think, I think I've think i had units like with more than 20 power like from the Spanner, so, or 20 health and stuff like that. So the Spanner gives huge buffs. Uh, so if you're going to run any kind of mech build, the Spanner is an awesome card. And when he combines with the Burner Boy, it gives you an, another AoE as well. So And he's not bad statted for three, three energy on top of all that. Uh, the Tide of Muscle. Is is it a bad card? Is it a bad card or is it situational? Um, I'm going to say it's kind of like situational. It's a good beginner card, right? It allows you to draw if you're not playing Grook, for example. I could see you running this with the other two war bosses especially as you're kind of early on in your collection I think you know it's, it's pretty vanilla most factions have this kind of card um, but the other cat factions the chaos one's a bit better I would say but this one just draws you two cards I think it's okay it's it's situational it's it's not good and you will replace it eventually but it, it, I can't say it sucks because like I said two of your war bosses in the orc faction don't allow you to draw cards so you know having a card that does that is obviously you know obviously has its its uses now, the Warbiker, for me, is right up there. The Warbiker is awesome. I think he is, um, again, one of the best finishers in the faction. Super, super good card. Very flexible. We can use his flank ability as a clear, so we can use it defensively early in the game in a pinch when we really need that removal. Obviously, like I keep saying with everything, it synergizes really well with Makari. Synergizes really well with Bananob, but particularly Makari because he's um, the Warbiker's melee attack is his main attack, and that's what Makari benefits and buffs so you know he is really good the other thing is of course he has the ability fast so being able to basically drop on the board when it's empty and that trigger the fast ability which means he can attack face which is like flank on steroids um, it gives you that classic kind of Leroy Jenkins if anyone played Hearthstone that kind of big finisher that comes out of hand and kind of attacks face and wins so there's some great combos we can do. We can drop Warbiker, then drop Makari to buff the Warbiker, play Gazgul's Hero Power to buff him again, then play proper Killy, and that's how we get the big kind of 16 um, damage combos from hand. Very, very powerful card. Next up, we have the Banner Knob. Now, where am I putting the Banner Knob? Um, I think the Banner Knob, for me, sits in good. He is a really solid card. He can be used right up to having a top meta deck. My top meta decks this season that I climb with involve the Banner Knob. Um, but there are some meta decks that don't run him. But he's also great in a beginner deck. And I think he is one you can get earlier on. So for that, I would say he's a really, really solid card. He buffs, he buffs ranged attack as well as melee attack. That's quite big, especially in the Orc faction. It gives you it gives you some ability to deal with enemy flyers. So I think he's a really good card, Banner Knob. You can't go wrong. Burner Boy is incredibly situational. I think the Burner Boy for me is a card that whenever I play Burner Boy, I kind of feel like 
I'm always like the payoffs like yes you know like when you've got <laughs> you've got the spanner down you pay him off and he AOE's the board it's it's just an awesome feeling um but often he's just sitting there in my hand doing nothing and I'm like do I play him as a tempo card or do I hold him for the combo and it's it feels clunky and, and so of course he's he's literally the definition of a situational card because his actual ability requires a specific situation to work so um, you know good when it goes off but it is situation it will feel clunky at times um, the iron gob is a staple in my rock hard kind of group control deck and I run two copies in there and I think it's a good card the concussive ability to kind of stop the enemy warlord is good especially against orcs right when you're scared of things like proper kill it so it's not bad in the mirror match but again I would say it's situational and now that people are running Gazgul who has the 40 health like you don't need the heal as much so for me I think that the Iron Gob's lost a little bit of its juice this season I would say it is um, it's a situational card a Death Gun Looter is for me a good card particularly when you are new to the to the game like this is a really solid card it's got four energy and it has five health that's uh, or having one extra health over the energy cost is usually a good sign and it's got pretty good stats in terms of its melee range but more importantly you only need one thing to die two things to die and suddenly its stats are like really good and this thing obviously can get insane but basically every time something dies it gets plus one range attack when i say something your your opponent's troops as well not just yours so a uh, defcon looter can grow ridiculously big and particularly now where we've got this gretchen meta where lots of scarabs and gretchens and things are about and eldar are quite prevalent as well lots of guardians so actually defcon looter can get quite big quite quickly and he's got the health to survive so i think he's a good solid card he's not like awesome and he's obviously a little bit slow but um but he's solid he's a really solid good card this 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 there's no way around that. Uh, what else have we got? We got the Death Copter. Now the Death Copter got a recent buff with the recent bal balance patch, um, being a um, uh, mech card and benefiting from the spanner, and it also increased its uh, melee attack as well. So it's pretty good, and it's a flyer, right? And it's for four mana. It's got the for, for four energy. It's got five health again. So it's it's pretty it's pretty well statted really for four. Of course, this thing. Um, does well in the late game too because it's got tied so you can play out two or even three of them so overall i kind of like the death copter however you know it's still got that big drawback which is the uh which is the uh unstable and for me it's kind of situational like i've had some games where death copter has like just gone off maybe a spanner combo and it's just won me the game and I've had a lot of games where I play him and I kind of he kind of dies and then he does three damage to what was next to him and I sort of think was it worth it? So I I I, I I'm still not I'm still not ready to say he's a good card. I, it's really on the verge for me. It's it's close. If someone really wants to argue with me in comments and say that this is good, I I probably would back down. Like I could see an argument for why it's good, but I for me personally. I'm, I think it's kind of like one of those that's on the fence between good and situational. I'm, I'm going to put him towards the top end of situational. One card that uh, definitely is unambiguous is the no mucking about. I mean, this card for me is like, whew, my gosh. So for four energy, it says destroy a random enemy troop. It sounds bad, right? Like, oh, oh random. Oh, well, that's not as good as the five energy cost one that the Marines have where they get to choose it. Well, yeah, except for, in this game, it's a lot easier to manipulate the board state. We can often ensure that they only do have one thing on the board. And also, we get to play around things like stealth, which the Marine one doesn't. So we can just automatically kill, and it makes it a huge pain for Tyranid players. Tyranids hate this card. Like, it is horrendous. Or like the Eldar Exarch that goes into stealth, or, you know, etc, etc. So basically... For me, No Mucking About is one of the best single hard removals in the game, and it's an awesome card that every Orc player wants to be running, probably two of. In fact, not even probably, definitely two of. Speaking of awesome cards, we have the Orc Knob. I mean, this is a legendary card, of course, so we want it to be good, and it is good. It's really solid. I would say it should be the second legendary you should craft in the Orc faction. I think perhaps Makari, no, Makari is the first one. And I think Orc Knob is either the second one or it's Gazgul, depending on what war bosses you already had and stuff. 
Uh, solid card, really great stats. It's got flank itself and it gives flank to all other units. There's some really great combos you can do with the Green Horde. Um, so you can play the Green Horde and then you can play Art Knob, for example, on turn five. And then you can bring on all of your like Slugger Boys, Grot, Storm Boys, and they all get to attack and it's just incredible. And dare I even mention the Makari combo, obviously Makari costing zero, coming on, killing something, back into your hand costing zero, coming on, killing something, etc. It's a, it's a board clear. If you can beat the timer, Makari can basically clear the board with that combo. So Oak Knob is very, very powerful, there's no doubt about that. He is an awesome S tier card. Now the Scar Boy is He's okay, he's okay, but he's not great. I would say the Scarboy is... Hmm, do I want to say he's a good card? Do I want to say he's a situational card? I think he's a situational card. Yeah, he's like... <clears throat> he's like... Where are we? No, not sucks. He, he doesn't suck. He's a situational card. I mean, it's his melee attack that gets buffed, whereas the Death Copter... Uh, the Defcon Looter, it's a range attack, so I, I give that extra extra credit uh, for being able to deal with like flyers and stuff. Um, but obviously, you could say, well, Scarboy um, benefits from Mob, yeah, but it needs more setup, and um, it's got pretty good stats, you know, don't get me wrong, but I just don't see many Orc players playing this in the four drop slot, so I, I think it's kind of only good in very few situations, it's very slow. Uh, next up, we got the Scorcher Assault. Scorcher Assault is really, really solid. I think Scorcher Assault for me is a really good card. I would be happy to. Um, it's, in this meta, it's bordering on awesome, but it is random, so it's not awesome for me. I think it's good because the two to four. The, the, there are times when I've played it and it's underwhelmed, and then you've got this awkward board state that you've got to clear up. But ultimately, being able to damage the opponent's face is really big. Um, three units is um, what most board states aren't bigger than that, so it kind of is a mini AoE, and um, yeah, it's very effective. It can sub goes really well with Grots as well, right? So if you've got a little board of Grots, and then you Scorcher Assault, even if you don't completely kill what the f you know, kill your opponent from the flames, then the Grots can kind of finish finish them off. Good, it's a good card. Unbridled Carnage. Ooh, where would I put the Unbridled Carnage? I think Unbridled Carnage is a good card as well. Um, I mean, I think it's probably quite close to where we just talked about. It's a clunky card because you're always like holding it going, have I got enough down, have I not? When do you use it? Do you use it for removal? Do you use, use it for burn? But it's flexible and it's cheap damage and it works really well with all the Gwats again. So I think it's a good card. Big Crumper. Mm. Now, Big Crumper is... A lot of people would say this card sucks. I actually quite liked Big Crumper last season, but I think with some of the changes that have happened, Big Crumper's fallen even further down. So, last season I might have been making a case that he was a good card or top of situational. I think this season I'm prepared to say he's bottom of situational. Like, I don't think he's a bad card. He's pretty good in draft. And, you know, it's still three damage on the turn he, he arrives. And I think that counts. Like, cards that generally suck just don't do anything on the turn that they arrive. And, like, Big Crumper does. So I don't think you can say that he sucks. And obviously, if they don't kill him, then he's swinging for six as well. So I, I think he's, he's, like, bottom end of situational. Now, the Boom Daka Snazwagon got a big buff this season. Um, it's only one point of health, but actually that's quite a lot. Uh, it turns out, and um, he's, he's already a flanking unit. He's got good range attack as well as melee attack. So the Boom Daka is a solid card. It's even got Tide, so you can play this like on turn 10 and get two of them. Uh, or it can get benefit from Discount, for example, from Mechboy Gamzet Gamek or something like that. So overall, I think this card is, um, is, is much improved, and I would say it is now a good card. Um, probably... Yeah, I think it's I think it's somewhere probably around here. Really, really cool. Go ahead and craft. Uh, Get 'em lads is not very good. I would say it is bottom of situational for me. Like obviously, if you get a big board state and then play Get 'em lads, you know, thinking about early on in your collection, it's not a bad strategy to build. You know, it's a deck building card, isn't it? You can build a strategy around that. You can win the game with it. So I can't say it sucks because it can win you the game. 
I just think as your collection develops, you'll find better better finishers, and also it's rare that you're going to get that board state. So, and I also think five's a bit expensive. So I, I don't think it's a good card, but I probably wouldn't say it quite sucks. But I think it's right down at the bottom of situational for me. Uh, Killer cans are they re received a buff, and I still I have tried them this season, but I still think that they're situational. I mean. Is there an argument that they're good? Yeah, but for 5 energy and only having 5 health, I just feel like they're a bit easy to be removed from cheaper units. So it often doesn't get the benefit of using that whopping 7 uh, melee and range attack that it has because it's usually just fighting smaller units that were played earlier in the game. So I actually don't think Killer Can's that good. I, I, I don't know that I'd say sucks because he has got such a you know powerful stats but and he's also got tide which is pretty cool so like you can again if you get the discount the killer can and then play two of these out there's some good stuff you can do but overall i think it's very situational and i don't think it's a card that makes a top orc meta deck if i'm honest next up we got mech boy gamzek now mech boy is a really good legendary there's a lot of good legendaries in orcs i don't think he's the best one but i definitely think he is good and i would probably say that mech boy is yeah he's he's really up there i think i think he's he's a good card he's towards the top end of good he's got very solid stats he can make your vehicles cheaper and now the vehicles have got better i think he's got better he also synergizes with burner boy so he's another trigger for Burner Boy outside of the spanner. So he's a legendary spanner, basically. Yep, I think he's a really good card. If you get him uh, as a draw, if you get him in a, open him in a pack, then you should be smiling. You should be very happy. Would I craft him? Yes, but not until I got some more essential ones like Ortnob and Makari first. Pain Boy is a weird card because he's got really good health, but then really weird stats outside of that. And I find that that's what gets played around. Uh, I'd probably want to play this card a little bit more and, and, and test it a little bit more. But honestly, I would say it is not a good card. I don't know that I can say it completely sucks. I'm going to say it's some probably in the, towards the lower end of situational. Big Shooter Boy definitely, uh, definitely sucks. Um, this is a terrible card. Don't play it. It's a beginner card. Obviously, it's terrible stats. It's... I don't know why it's a card. Um, then we got Mech Boy Ugruk. Now, Mech Boy Ugruk has Blast 2, which is very powerful if it gets to swing. It's slow. It's got to play and then stick, and then you attack next turn. And if you do that, you're winning. Uh, but on top of that, what really makes this card good is that the turn you play it, everything else that attacks triggers Mob and then puts a Slugger Boy in your hand, and that is a powerful ability. So I'm going to say that Mech Boy Ugruk is... Um, where do I want to put this guy? He's not an awesome card. He's probably like somewhere towards the top end of situational. He's he's arguably in the good section, um, particularly in a Gazgul. I quite like him in a Gazgul deck with the Green Horde because he's a, he gets around the fact that Gazgul can't draw cards, right? So you've got Green Horde, sat in your hand, you play this guy, and then suddenly you've got loads of boys, and now you can you can benefit from that. So I think top of situation is about right. Then we have the Squig Buggy. Now, when the Squig Buggy got announced at the December patch, everybody looked at this and thought, oh my god, this is the most broken card in the game. It's going to completely break the meta, and it looks bonkers. And I agree, on paper, it absolutely did look bonkers. However, in practice, it is a little bit underwhelming. It's very good. It's a flanker with six range attacks. So what it do, what it it, what it does is it definitely kills something when it comes on. All the other stuff is kind of like, hmm, it's okay. I mean, it, it drops a squig, and the squig does two damage, two to three damage to the enemy face. I think there's some real value in that. Uh, the AoE part, not so much, because generally, like, they play around that part. And the other thing is that both the squig and the squig buggy have unstable. So they tend to just blow each other up and usually put a bit of damage on your own face as well. So slightly underwhelming, but still actually very good. Like, it's still a very powerful thing to be able to flank and kill something with six range attacks. So I'm actually going to put it in the good section still. Um, but it's definitely not quite as awesome as it kind of looks on paper. Now the Storm Boy Strike is... I have seen people running this this season. I don't particularly like it, but I think it's situational in that. Like, it, it, you can't say it sucks, because if your enemy's got a board, and you can play this and get a whole bloody front line of flyers with 
uh, you know, the right combination, then this could be potentially game changing, but it's slow because, you know, you, you get a big board of stuff, but you can't attack with them. So, you know, playing like Orc Knob and then this would be funny on turn 10. But I think it's kind of like somewhere, yeah, it's somewhere in situational. The Tank Buster is pants, and I'm very happy to say that it's kind of in sucks. I'm going to put it towards the top end because just if it ever did get to actually attack, it does have Blast 2. And Blast 2 is really good. I think Blast is like a really great ability in this game if you get to use it. So, but overall, I think its stats aren't good and it's slow and it costs 6 energy. So it's, it sucks. Uh, don't run that card. Veteran Stormboy, however, I think is a very, very good card. I am so tempted to say that this card is awesome. The synergy it has of giving Stormboy's flank and also being a flying unit with high melee attack is quite rare, right? So if you think about things like Necron Doom Size, all of these kind of like standard flying flankers that uh, are in the game, the Storm Boy trades really nicely into those. So it's like the anti-flying flanker. It just comes on and attacks with its melee attack and kills these kind of like ranged attack flyers really easily. I think it's like super good. I, I, I think it's one of those like shooter boy where it's bordering on awesome, but right at the top of like the solid good cards. Uh, Art Shell is one of my personal favorites. Obviously there are ways round him. But it's just one of those big, meaty, tanky units. And if your opponent can't deal with him, then he just runs away with the game. So I think the Ard Shell is awesome. Um, but is he awesome? Uh, I would say he is another one who is like right up there. He's right up there at the top of good. He's not quite awesome. Because, you know, if you've got the answer to him, you've got the answer to him. But he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I think he's worth the seven energy. The Death Dread is also 7 energy. They did now they did buff the Death Dread. But for me personally, I think he's very bordering on good, but I think he's still a bit situational just because he's still 7 energy, and I'm not sure that his ability is kind of like. I don't know. This is one I'd like to test more. But for me, I just think that the Orc faction is so powerful right now that in in other factions the death dread would be very good would be good but i think in the orc faction i think he's he's right at the top end of the situation or for me he's not quite in the good section uh commander oh commander i so want him to work i've had a few decks where he's been pretty good but i'd say he's situational he, he definitely doesn't suck like having a high health and stealth means that that's really good i mean that you know stealth is a premium in this game and like there's no way of getting rid of this guy beyond like some hard removal you know, usually all card removal is the only way you get rid of him. So he'll stick around. It's just a bit slow for seven energy. I'd kind of love to see this guy at six energy and maybe reduce stats a little bit. But um, yeah, I want to play test more with him. I, I, it's, again, the orc faction is so powerful. It's trying to find the right deck. But if you've got this guy early, he's early in your collection. I mean, he's definitely a good, a good, interesting finisher and can be used to kind of clear mid range units as well. So I, I do think he's good in the right situation, but. I'd say situational. Now, the Will of Gork is a, such a unique card in the game. No other faction's really got this kind of card. It basically destroys the board state. It's super powerful. Most card games have a card like this. And as I say in uh, Warp Forge, it's the Orcs that have got it for some reason. So it's the Will of Gork. And I would say he is right up there with only really Makari and Gazgul kind of, uh, and Grook kind of like testing this card for power. I think it's. Uh, it gives it allows you to play control it allows you to just deal with any board state right so um just one note on this though anything that has uh, like invulnerable like the wraith knight for example when it comes down uh, and spends the stones the will of god won't destroy it so that's something you need to be mindful of but Outside of those very rare situations, Will of Gork is just incredible. Very, very powerful unit. Uh, the Battle Wagon is situational. My friend started playing the game, and uh, shout out to Alan, and uh, he played this this card very and, and did very well with it in his Grook deck. Now, why? Because it makes your opponent... It, you can drop this card, and on that turn, all your other things that attack with melee attack use the mob ability to kind of make your infantry cheaper in hand. So you can't say that that sucks. Like That is an ability that has an impact on the game straight away and I think that is definitely uh, worthy of calling it situational. I don't I don't think it's good but it, it's not a sucky card. 
Uh, now, speaking of sucky cards, this card is a sucky card. I think that the gun wagon is way too expensive for what it does. I think concussive has been a little bit over overrated by the devs at the minute. And this this just needs something else. It's it's not good enough for eight. Now the Gorkonaut, oh the Gorkonaut, I have a little bit this has a little bit of a special place in my heart. I I'm kind of I kinda of think this card is I played him in my run this season, in my top fifty. If you've not seen that video, go and watch it. But um you know, there were so many games where it, I just never needed him. We just didn't get that right time to come down and play him for nine mana. If he does and he survives, he's awesome, right? He's got the armor now. He's got the Blast 5. It's a lot of fun to play. I definitely think when you're early on in your collection and you don't have Rock Invasion and things, that this could be a really good... Uh, playing this guy as your top-end finisher, no problem with that at all. I think it's uh, probably, if we're being objective, though, we probably have to say that this guy is still... A kind of somewhat situational card so for me I think he's yeah he's in the situational somewhere uh, next up we've got the rock invasion mm, rock invasion is superb guys it is one of those it was my first legendary I crafted now I don't advise that to you I think Makari is definitely better but it is still an awesome card it's one of those finishers in the faction it's one of those where you know I was I was winning a game against Orcs quite comfortably with my chaos and then they rolled Rock Invasion on turn 10, and they got three Ard Shells, Ard Shell Grooks in the in the Rock Invasion. I was like, okay, I nothing I can do about that, <laughs> and lost the game. So Rock Invasion is just an absolute kind of like game changer and a, and a winner for you. And speaking of finishing on a high notes, we're not going to do that today because we have a Stomper. Uh, a Stomper is our last card, and as cool as a model Stomper is, as cool as he's on the tabletop wargaming, again, he's got this concussive ability, and I think being overvalued somewhat. Obviously, it's one of those bodies that you just the opponent can barely get rid of without hard removal. But you're never going to drop this for 10 energy, and it, and it's you know if you win a game with this thing congratulations but it's probably the only one you are gonna so for me that card sucks sadly and i'd like to see some buffs to it so there you go guys uh that is my orc factions tier list card by card from awesome down to sucks i hope that really helps i know when i started the game the ecclesiarch was doing some of these and i, I found those really helpful he did a really good one on necrons for example so if you're a necron player go and check that out on the ecclesiarch's channel um, so yeah, I hope that really helps with, with the Orcs. If you've got any questions, just ask me in the comments. What do you think? Do you, do you actually agree with these rankings? Are there any that you think I've made a real misjudgment in your, in your kind of, in, in your opinion? Let me know in the comments, because I'd, I'd kind of like to see what people have to say about it. I might do a review of this in about a month's time and see, um, see if there are any updates. But thanks for watching, guys. Please like, uh, pump the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to build the subscribers up, so... I really appreciate all your support. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.